Monument Valley is almost directly west of the Four Corners. You'd have to look hard to find them, but 90,000 people live here, the entire Navajo Nation. There are no television antennas or telephone poles. It's just like, just like it was when America was 13 colonies and a dream. This place makes it seem like it wasn't that long ago. On the maps of Arizona and Utah, this is called Monument Valley. But to me, it'll always be John Ford country. As a matter of fact, folks call this Ford's Point. When you stand here and look around you, you don't have to ask why John Ford loves to make westerns or why we like to go see them. Harry Goulding uh, owned the local trading post, and he was the one that talked John Ford into coming out here and shooting his first western. His first western was Stagecoach, 1939, and it was really the first time that John Wayne had a major part. The one thing you really can't miss in Monument Valley is the mittens. It's those two buttes that have the uh, uh, little uh, spires on them that kind of look like thumbs. Monument Valley is full of mesas and buttes that have wonderful colors and shapes. They are a photographer's paradise. Well, what do you think about it, Ed? I, th I think it's a butte. No, it isn't. It's a mesa. <laughs> In recent times, uh, this valley was a little bit wetter than it is now, and uh, it supported large uh, numbers of sheep. The Navajo had hundreds of thousands of them, uh, but we were told that for the last couple of decades, it's been rather dry, and they didn't uh, have nearly the size herds that they had. Nevertheless, we found a herd of sheep uh, roaming through Monument Valley, but notice that there's no shepherd there. There are two sheepdogs, and the sheepdogs are driving the sheep along, I don't think I've ever seen sheep so well attended uh, and not by a person. On closer inspection of the sheep, it appeared that there were a number of different varieties that were present. With the sheep just to the uh, side of the road, uh, a number of photographers became interested in the sheep and uh, the dogs became a little bit concerned about uh, just exactly what our interest was. and what we were doing. They were a little bit nervous. I don't think they were used to photographers. The reason I'm showing you this film clip isn't because of the background. The fact of the matter is uh, you've already seen this background and you know that it's Monument Valley. The point this time is where the stagecoach is going to stop. The stop is not a, uh, a fabricated location for the movie. It is in fact Harry Goulding's trading post the way that it was when the movie was shot. This is Goulding's trading post and it still exists. These days, right behind the trading post is uh, Captain Brittle's office. Uh, Captain Brittle was a John Wayne character. Well, we have to get up early for the balloon ride. Uh, we're meeting people at 5 o'clock in the morning. Thank you. 
Well, I'm used to balloon rides being off at dawn, and so when the sun came up and our balloon was not yet inflated and ready to go, I was a little bit disappointed. In fact, when the sun broke across the horizon, the fellows had not even selected the launch site yet. And I was a little bit disappointed by the fact that they just couldn't get up in the air when the light was the best for taking photographs. The launch point that they selected, however, was John Ford's Point, the particular piece of geography that was named after him because he used to do a lot of shooting from there. Just kind of stand up with it. Okay, if you can start standing up, you can now. I'll help you. Okay, water bag.
negative. We're going to stay low here at the, near the surface. Scenic Air is going to come over and give his passengers a little view. Well, we're only a few feet up off the ground now, and it looks like we're going to be coming in for a landing. Uh, the landing location is going to be near Totem Pole, uh, and uh, the, from this range you can see a lot of the uh, little footprints of uh, rodents and horses and, and birds and everything else. Well, I think you can certainly see why this is a popular movie location. Not only did John Ford shoot Stagecoach here, but he also shot The Searchers and a bunch of others. The Marble Man uh, uh, commercials were done from here. Once Upon a Time in the West, uh, even uh, uh, some things that are not Westerns, the Iger uh, uh, Sanction, uh, uh, MacGyver had some episodes here. Steven Spielberg uh, did part of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, uh, not far from here. Uh, Back to the Future 3, Forrest Gump. The Harvey Girls, My Darling Clementine, Ford Apache, She Wore a Yellow Ribbon, The Searchers, uh, Sergeant Rutledge, How the West Was Won, Cheyenne Autumn, uh, uh, Again a Love Story, Easy Rider, McKenna's Gold, Joshua, Wild Rovers, Electra Glide in Blue, The uh, Trial of Billy Jack, uh, and uh, a fairly large number, The Legend of the Lone Ranger was also shot here. When a uh, hot air balloon lands, it's traditional to have a, a champagne brunch. Uh, the champagne in this particular case was uh, absent, uh, but we did have a, a little bit to eat. Uh, the really funny thing about this, though, is that uh, when the uh, when the pilot took at the uh, took a look at the lunch that uh, they had prepared for us, uh, he was aghast because apparently the ground crew had eaten part of it. As I uh, said, we were landing at Totem Pole, and uh, it, it happens that Totem Pole is also one of the scenes uh, that you can see in the John Ford, John Wayne movie, Ford Apache. I guess one of the most surprising things that I discovered while researching for this was that in 2001, Monument Valley is a stand-in for the landscape of Jupiter. Monument Valley marks a uh, fitting conclusion to our visit to the Four Corners area where Hollywood put the West. And remember, you can identify Monument Valley by the mittens. Yeah.